I set the two feet wide LED light close to the person. The light becomes softer and it has contrast. Then use one foot wide LED light from below. Much better. Now I want a little more impact. So light up her face directly with that light. Oh, that light is a hot light and it gets a strong shadow of her hair. Let's try again. Change the pose and face direction and adjust the light. This time, the part I want to emphasize stands out and I can make the good balance between field light and strong main light. Looks great! How to use a softbox to make the background darker? I would like to show you how to use a small softbox to make the background darker. First, ask the subject to stand at the distance from the gray paper background. Then place a small strobe with softbox as close as possible to the subject. The light is soft, which is nice. But since the light from the strobe is weak, even when there is a good exposure on the subject, the background does not become dark. Let's try shooting with the strobe turned off. Even with just ambient light, the photo turns out pretty bright. Let's try shooting with the strobe turned on and increasing the amount of light. This time, I've changed the ISO from 1600 to 100. With good exposure on the subject, the background becomes darker. Let's try shooting with the strobe turned off again. Since we've darkened it for stops for this time, if it's only ambient light, the photo turns out black. Through this, we can tell that image is hardly affected by the ambient light. Next, let's try pressing the softbox 2 meters away from the person. The strobe is far from the person now, so I've slightly increased the amount of light. When I try shooting, the light on the person seems hard and the background also turns out bright. Let's try pressing the softbox closer to the person again. The begin the actual shoot. I advise on details such as facial expression and face angles. I want to make the shadows of the face a bit darker, so I will use a black reflector on the side opposite from the softbox. The shadows of the face become darker and there is contrast now, so this creates a cool image. Next. Let's use a stool and try different poses. The photographer can show examples of different poses. 
I also advise on the placement of the hands. I've forgotten to include the black reflector, so I will include the black reflector again and continue shooting. The key points this time were to place the softbox as close as possible to the subject. And if you set the amount of light from the strobe at the high level, the background becomes darker. Also, if you include a black reflector, the shadow parts of the subject will become darker, resulting in a cool image. I would like to show you a variation of shooting using only one light with a small softbox. This time, I will shoot the full body of the subject. First, apply the softbox directly on the subject as usual. Place the light at an angle of 45 degrees to the subject. and the distance between the person and the background should be about 2 meters. In this case, the light is hard and the image of this photo is too stiff because the light comes from an angle casting a shadow. Let's try shooting with a softbox turned toward the left wall. The distance between the strobe and the wall is about 1.5 meters. And the distance between the wall and the subject is about 3 meters. Since the distance is further and the light will be bounced, I include the amount of strobe light by about 3 stops. The light is reflected on the entire wall, so the surface of the light becomes larger and the light becomes softer. The image wrapped in soft light is very nice. Now I want an accent light hitting the hair. Since there is only one light, Place the softbox to the back left of the subject and light the subject same backlit. At this time, I want to use a corner of the light, so swing the softbox slightly outside the subject instead of pointing it directly at the subject. The background and the surface of the softbox should be about parallel. Make the amount of light a little weaker than before. In addition, shine that light on the large reflector so that the bounce strobe light hits the subject. The larger the reflector you use, the light hitting the subject will become softer. There is an accent light on the hair, and with the edge light also on the outline of the body now, soft light is hitting the subject. This looks very nice. Next, I want to make the background a little brighter, so I put this softbox facing the background. 
The distance between the background and the softbox is about 1.5 meters. And the position of the reflector is the same. The background becomes brighter. And although the hair accent light and the edge light is a little weaker than before, soft light is hitting the subject. This makes a high key image with a soft atmosphere from the subject, which also makes the image rather sharp. Please change the lighting according to the image you want to take. In this video, I will show you how to use a softbox to change the direction of light and to change the brightness of the background in your photos. I will use a large round softbox that's about 150 cm. The strobe light for the softbox is the Godox AD300. I will press the light so that it is coming from directly beside the subject. The background is white but I want to make it as dark as possible. So the subject will stand about 5 meters away from the background. First, you will want to move the softbox as close to your subject as possible. By moving the softbox closer to your subject, you can soften the light and darken the background. The soft light from the side will create a very nice gradient lighting. The subject will also appear a bit gentler. The contrast is a little heavy here because the slope is close and the shadow side is a bit darker. I think this type of light may come across as a little too soft for a male subject. Next, I will shoot with a round softbox placed above the subject. When you place a softbox from above like this, it's best to use a boom stand. I recommend using the largest and steadiest light stand possible. I use a century stand. I also recommend using weights to stabilize the stand. Press the strobe so that it's close enough to not be in the frame. The subject should stand just to the very back edge of the round softbox. The light is coming from above, but since the subject is standing at the very back edge of the round softbox, the light will hit from diagonal direction just right, while also creating a mix of light from above and from the front. Next, the subject should stand slightly in front of you, directly under the center of the round softbox. This will slightly reduce the light coming diagonally from the front and increase the shadows in the concave areas of the face. In addition, since the strobe light does not penetrate all the way to the background, the white background is darker and more like what I have in mind. It looks very nice. Let's try pressing another smaller softbox directly next to the subject. As before, bring it as close to the subject as possible. Since the light area is smaller than the large softbox, the light from the strobe will not reach the background as much 
and the background will be darker than before. And because the stroke is closer to the subject, the light hitting the figure is softer and the contrast is higher, giving a photo a cool masculine look. If you want to make the shadow area darker, try putting a black reflector on the opposite side of the softbox. Keep trying this out until you get a photo just like you want. How to take cool photos of athlete using daylight sync? In this video, I will show you how to take cool photos of athlete by using a technique called daylight sync. This time, a small softbox will be used as a main light and a Godox AD200 as an edge light. The subject will be standing with the sun as a backlit during a clear midsummer day. First, take a photo without the flash. We want to capture a lot of the sky, so we'll take the photo from a low angle. The photo is backlit, so it's like a silhouette. This image is also pretty cool. But I'd like the subject to be brighter, so I will adjust the exposure. The exposure was set to the subject, so the sky in the background ended up bright and white. I want to make the background a little darker so that we can bring out the blue of the sky, so I will add a flash. The brightness of the background sky is adjusted by changing the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, but the brightness of the flash will not affect the shutter speed, so we'll speed up the shutter speed. In this case, I set it to 1 400 seconds. When using high-speed sync, the light intensity of the flash will be reduced, so choose the fastest shutter speed that is compatible with the sync. Click the shutter many times until you get the timing right. You can take cool daylight sync photos by first adjusting the brightness of the background to your liking and then matching the light intensity of the flash accordingly. By including edge lights as well as main lights, you can create the highest light and make our subject look even cooler. Using the flash to take cool photos. In this video, I will show you how to use the flash to take cool photos while letting the bright natural light filter in through the curtains. First, we we'll take a photo without the flash. I'll use a soft backlight from the window, so even if you don't use a flash, as long as the exposure is right, you can get a nice shot. But I want to take a cooler photo with a stronger contrast, so I will press a black reflector board on the right side. By pressing the black reflector board to one side, it will increase the shadow of the side more so than the photo I took before. Next, I will bounce the fresh Godox AD200 from high on the back wall 
and then I will use a white reflector on the opposite side of the black reflector to reflect the light from the flash and shine it on the subject. The light reflected off the back wall becomes a counterpoint and the light that reflects off the reflector becomes a really beautiful light. The main points are, in order to create the filtered white light through the curtain, you must set the shutter at a slow speed. Also, it's important to not to take a photo using a strong flash. You lose the light white softness if you use too strong intensity of flash. While the natural light in the background is a clean white, the subject will be in high contrast and the shadows will fall creating a real cool shot. In addition, by shining the flash in a semi-backlit condition, it creates a nice effect with the edge light and hair light. The light reflected by the white reflector becomes soft as it hits the subject, making the subject look beautiful. Shooting with deadlight. In this video, we will try taking photos using a LED deadlight spotlight. This is a spotlight, so the light will not spread out, but be contained in one space. First, I will press the deadlight in a high position and aim it directly at the subject. This will create a really cool mood. Now, I will press a blackboard with long vertical thread between the dead light and the subject. The shape of the thread is reflected onto the subject and creates an interesting image. There is a high contrast, so we should be careful with exposure so that the subject does not become whitewashed. Also, we can create many variations by moving the subject to the left or right and save the mood of the photo. Next, let's try using the flash instead of the dead light. Because the flash is diffuse light, if you use a board with thread like this, the shape of the thread in the image will become blurry and you won't get a nice photo. If you'd like to use this type of light, I recommend using a direct spotlight and not a flash.
visualizing the light of spring. Recently, it's popular for photo studios to make sets using dry flowers. For this video, I will show you how to take beautiful photos of your subject with a set made of dry flowers. The flash we will use is Godox AD200 without accessories. We'll try with two different light directions. Please take a look at the differences. When you are using a set made with dry flowers, it's nice to have a soft, gentle light. First, we'll bounce the flash from the left wall. Bouncing the light from the wall will make it a bit softer. Let's take some photos. The direction of the light will come diagonally from the right. The light is soft, but the impression is flat. The light is coming from the front light, so the whole thing is too realistic and uninteresting. The dry flower especially do not appear beautiful. So, I'd like to make the dry flowers a bit more beautiful and magical. This time, we'll try bouncing the flash from the far right wall. And we'll press the flash in high position. Let's take some photos. Now, the image is simply with soft light falling on the entire picture. It is a magical image like the light of a spring sun. When you are lighting a photo, try to keep in mind how to recreate a beautiful outdoor scene. For this next photo, why I thought of the lighting? I tried to image a same scene under a sakura, which is cherry blossom tree, with sunlight falling on the entire picture. When taking photos in a set made with dry flowers, if you use direct light from the front, the picture will turn out too realistic. But if you use same lighting, you can create a more magical photo. If you use same backlit soft light and pink dry flowers, it will look just like cherry blossoms. Since it is same backlit, if you add a flare, the photo will become even more magical. Please give it a try. Daylight synchronization for outdoors. For this video, I will talk about daylight synchronization for the outdoors. Daylight synchronization is a fresh technique that you can use to get better photos of people when photographing outdoors. For this video, we took photos in a park with many trees. It is a cloudy day and we are surrounded by trees and surrounded by a soft light. First, we'll take photos without a flash and just use the natural light. When the brightness of the entire screen is set to the correct exposure, 
the face ends up very dark. It's not a bad photo, but I don't really like how dark the face is. If the exposure is set to matte the face, then the background will become too bright. Next, I will use a flash. This time, I'll use Godox AD100. First, I will try setting the flash to hit the subject directly from the front at the diagonal. The flash is about 2 meters distance from the subject. Let's take a photo. The photo looks like it was lit by a flash and looks rather flat. It's not a good photo. However, if your goal was just to light up the subject, this would be okay. But it's not the type of light that photographs a person beautifully. So this time, we will set the flash inside of the soft box. This soft box is 60 cm by 90 cm. We can't bring a large soft box with us to the outdoors, so this one is a little small. Let's take a photo. This one is very soft. The light intensity of the flash is weak, so let's make it a bit stronger. The flash and the background have become much more balanced. Let's go with this I take a few variations. It's very nice. Let's try taking photos near the stairs. This time, I tried making the light come from slightly further back. The balance is good, and it appears as if it is sunlight is shining. The light is from slightly further back and becomes like a backlight, so even when photographs are full length, the subject stands out very well. It's important to not to make the light too strong in order to keep it looking natural. When doing daylight synchronization is an outdoor location, use a flash, but be cool and use it in a hidden way. How to create an evening mood during an outdoor location shoot? You will have a photo with great impact if you create an evening mood in your outdoor location shoot. In today's video, we'll talk about how to shoot outdoors. We'll attempt to create a sunset mood by using a flash. This time, I took photos under the elevated railway tracks along the Tama River in Tokyo. The weather is overcast. First, let's take a photo without using the flash. The telephoto lens has an aperture of f2.8, so the depth of field is shallow and the background is beautifully brewed. It is a beautiful portrait, but I feel like something is missing. 
So, in order to make it look as if some light from the sun is hitting the person from the left rear, we use a flash on the left side. We are trying to recreate the sun, so be sure to place the light as high as possible. Okay, let's take a photo. The flash is hitting the person's hair in a beautiful way, just like sunlight. Compared to the photo from earlier, this one has more impact. However, I like to produce a more evening like light, so I'll put an orange filter onto the flash. Let's take a photo. Okay, now it looks more like the evening, and as if the light of the sun is shining on our subject from the left rear. However, the strength of the light is a bit weak. So I'd like to make it brighter by moving the flash closer to our subject. This one has impact and is just like how I imagined. When you are shooting outdoors, Instead of just taking photos, it's best to keep in mind what you can do to make the photo better. Imagine what kind of photo you want to shoot and use a flash to help you reach your goal. Shooting in a small dark room is only one window. In today's video, I will show you how to shoot in a small dark room with only one window. The light from small windows will end up a hard light. When shooting a women's subject, it looks prettier to use a soft light. So we'll stand our subject so that the light from the window is backlight. First, let's shoot as it is. Because it's backlit, when you take a photo, the face will become dark and we end up being underexposed. Let's try it this time using a reflector board. It's better to use a large reflector board so I'm using a double folded 180cm by 180cm board. Think about where the light is coming from and set the reflector board so that it will bounce off the board and light up your subject beautifully. Also, let's set the exposure to plus and take a photo. Since we've used a large reflector board, the light that bounces off becomes soft and the image seems fluffy. The slight halation is also effective. The backlighting from the window creates a beautiful light on the hair. 
making the subject appear to float while expressing a sense of depth. In addition, by setting the color temperature low, the blue tones create a very cool and clean image. When using backlighting, the size and placement of the reflection board is key. It is important to use as large a reflector as possible and to circulate the light well. Please give it a try.